Hi, welcome to Three Things Thursday with Robert Hertel. So I went to the Mike Ferry production retreat last week in San Diego and, you know, what can you say? Every time you go to a Mike Ferry production retreat or superstar retreat or something along those lines, it's just amazing. The people you meet, the information he's giving, I mean, it's just an amazing three days of just filling my head with just absolutely great information, very motivated. I mean, I've been spending the last few days going through my notes, writing out my notes, and there's just so many good nuggets there. I mean, yeah, you're there for a few days and Mike's up there, you know, giving all these great information, and there's so many times I feel like he's talking directly to me. And if you've ever been to a Mike Ferry seminar, you know what I'm talking about, where you're just like, that's, he's, he's talking to me directly, right there, what a great point. You know, so, unbelievable information. So. What I wanted to do today was a little bit different than Three Things Thursdays. I wanted to go over my main points from the retreat. Now, not the, just the topics and subjects, the main like little one-line points, okay, that I thought really hit me the hardest, and I think would really do benefits for you as well. Now, if you went to the retreat, you're gonna have a few of these as, you know, on your list too, and I recommend you reread your notes rewrite your notes because there's going to be some things that you're going to find that <coughs> excuse me wow i didn't even remember that because i was writing other notes what a great point so rewrite them too and then make sure you read your notes every week all the way up to the superstar retreat in july and then when you go to superstar retreat you take more notes and then you read those every week for the rest of the year because if you don't what happens is that you leave the retreat you're here you're, all right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Then each passing day, it gets lower and lower, and two to three weeks, you haven't implemented anything, and you've completely forgotten about it, okay? So make sure that you're writing your notes, you're reading your notes all the time to make sure you're getting the most out of it, okay? So that's the important thing. So now here's the thing, getting back to today. I was trying to do a top 10, top 10 points. I couldn't do it. So I got to 25, and I was like, oh, I gotta cut this down a little bit. All right, I get down to 20. All right, I got down to 17 and I couldn't cut anymore. So there's 17, I'm sorry, I know it's a lot, but there's 17 points that I couldn't get rid of that really hit me the most that I wanna share with you from the Mike Ferry Production Retreat that are gonna have a big impact on my year and I think could also have a big impact on yours, okay? So I know it's long, but bear with me, a lot of really good stuff here. All right, so let's jump into it. Okay, 17 points from the Mike Ferry Production Retreat in San Diego last week that I think were huge, hit me the most. All right, here we go, so number one. There's no, such things as an, there's no such thing as an overnight success. The question is, how many overnights are you committed to so that you can become an overnight success? Huge, huge point. How many overnights are you committed to so that you can become an overnight success? And there was a sub point to that. You're not going to get what you want today, but if you do what you're supposed to every day, it will work out in the end. Look it, there's no such thing as an overnight success for most people, okay? it's. Daily activities, daily activities. How many overnights are you committed to for an overnight success? You know, Neil Schwartz, my mentor, always says, I'm a 40 year overnight success story. And Mike even mentioned that, you know, oh, overnight success. Well, I, I've given a thousand seminars overnight, I've done 10,000 coaching calls overnight. You know, that's, you know, how many overnights are you committed to? I think that's huge mindset wise because we get in that, well, it didn't work today, so I'm gonna give up on that one. No, it's, you got to do it every day. It's not going to come easy. You got to do it every day to get the success. So I think that was a huge one. Okay. Two, how often are you going to sell a home without a conversation? Look, I know it's 2018 and we do everything we can to not have a conversation. Text, email, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Snapchat, WeChat, all these other chats, whatever, anything, right? To not talk to people. You even do it on your voicemail. Uh, sorry, can I have some phone? For a quick response, text me. For a quicker response, just answer your phone. That would have been the quicker response, but I, I don't want to talk to people, right? You have to get over that, because I don't care if it's 18, 18, 19, 18, and 2018, you have to talk to people. How often are you gonna sell a home without having a conversation? Never. You have to talk to people. So know how to communicate, know the scripts, follow them, have a conversation, okay? Number three, learn to control those things you can control and let go of the things you can't control. There's a lot you can't control. But don't let it burden your day. Something's gonna happen with the appraisal, the inspection, you know, something happens with the weather and all these other different things, politics, economy. Can't control any of that. Don't let it control your day. Don't let it affect you. You can control your mindset. You can control your schedule. You can control your prospecting. You control all these things. Stay on that. 
can't control all this other stuff, so don't worry about it. Don't let it affect your day, okay? Number four, become much stronger in your lead follow-up so that you get to the seller before your competition does. We have a lead, don't sit on it. I'll call them in two weeks. No, call them in one, call them tomorrow. Because if you don't, your competition's gonna get there first. Stronger lead follow-up so you get to the, comp the seller before your competition does. Whatever your plan is with your lead follow-up, cut it in half at least, maybe even more. Get there, get to the seller, right? Stronger lead follow-up. Too many leads are just sitting there, nothing happens with them. Stronger lead follow-up. Number five, this is a great one. Ask more questions and talk 70% less. Now, as an expressive, that's hard. <laughs> but ask more questions, talk 70% less. Subpoint, you're not being paid by the words you use, you're being paid by the questions you ask. The less you talk, the more you get paid. Stop talking, ask questions, when you ask questions, they talk, okay? Selling is asking questions. The less you talk, the more you get paid. Ask good questions. Now practice that. Now that might annoy your spouse, but practice it. Ask questions, talk less. 70% less, great point. Number six, it's not about how much they like you or you like them. It's not about likes, it's about listings. Sometimes we get caught up and I want everybody to like me. I want them to like me, I like them. I don't like them. Who cares? Get the listing. It's not about likes, it's about listings. Sometimes they don't have to like you. Sometimes they're not going to like you if you're direct and honest, but they're gonna respect you. Get the listing, forget about the likes. Now likes might help, I'm not saying go be the jerk to everybody, but get out of the I have to like everybody. Get the listing, that's the important thing, okay? Number seven, to improve production, I have to remove the label. I asked a lot of people their biggest takeaways and this was their biggest takeaway, and for me it was mine too. Remove the labels. Don't label people, don't label yourself. And we do it, don't say that you don't. You see certain people, that's that type of person. That's that type of person. Someone calls you on your phone, you're like, oh God, it's this person. You know, don't label people, okay? You don't know really what's going on. You don't know what they could want, where that deal could come from. Don't label people and don't label yourself. Well, I can only do this much production. I can only sell homes to this price range to so these people in this area. No, don't label yourself. You will live up to your label. If you can only, if you say you're the ancient that, that can only do this, that's all you can do. You're gonna live up to that. You will live up to your label. Don't label yourself, okay? Number eight, we have to understand you can't win all the time, but you should be above the national average, right? You're not gonna win all the time if you're doing a lot of production, right? We have you know people that go, well, I take 100% of listings I go on. Well, how many did you go on last year? One, and it was my own house. <laughs> Good for you, you know? But if you're doing 10, 15, 20, 25, 50, 100 transactions, you're not gonna win every single time. It's just not gonna happen. Get over it, okay? You're gonna lose. Just don't lose very often, and you should be above the national average, because the national average for real estate is awful. You know the national average for the closing ratio for agents on listing presentations is 20%? 20%, two out of 10, that's terrible. You should be above that. You're gonna lose sometimes, but you better be above that. All right, number nine, this is in regards to building a team. The key point here is you have to be a strong, strong listing agent before starting a team. We're starting teams too quickly. I wanna start a team. And I know most people start a team because they don't wanna do any more work. They think, well, if I have a team, the team will do all the work and I don't have to do anything, okay? I know it, don't lie to me. I know that's what's going on. You have to be a strong, strong listing agent. 25, 30 listings, okay? Well, I got five listings, I need a buyer's agent. No, you don't. Strong listing agent, because here's a sub point. You can't expect a buyer's agent to produce if you're not providing leads from your listings. You need listings of a buyer's agent. Your buyer's agent should be strictly busy only on your listings. That's it, they shouldn't be out there trying to generate their own business. Why would they be a buyer's agent then? It should be their own agent. They should be so busy off of your listings and that's it, okay? So that means you have to have a lot of listings. That's just the bottom line, that's your buyer's agent. And then the second sub point was, you can't pick and choose what buyer leads you wanna work. The leads, that poisons the team. The buyer's agent gets all the buyer's leads, you keep working on listings. This is huge. And a lot of people that had teams went, that's huge. Because they pick and choose. Well, no, I'll take this one, I'll take this buyer. No, 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 the buyer's agent gets all the buyer leads, whether it's your past client, your center of influence, your mother, your father, I don't care. That goes to the buyer's agent. You don't get to pick and choose. You are listing, you get listings. Any buyer lead goes to the buyer's agent. That's it, okay? That keeps everybody happy, that keeps everybody structured. It's a win-win all around. 
You focus on listing. The buyer's agent gets all the buyer leads, no exceptions. Okay, that was a big, big point for teams. Okay, we're building teams too quickly. Okay, go be a listing agent, and then we'll talk about being building a team. Okay, building them too quickly. That right there, huge points are on the teams. Okay, all right, number 10. Good service is the lowest cost way to get more referrals. Look at Mike says it all the time. There's a direct correlation between the service you provide and the income you receive. Good service is the lowest cost way to get more referrals. Always provide good service. Okay. Number 11. I completely understand that being an independent contractor has huge advantages, but I also understand the disadvantages. Can I overcome the disadvantages when they pop up? Look, being an independent contractor can be great, right? You have the freedom, the flexibility of your schedule. That's great. But the disadvantage of that is you have the freedom and flexibility of your schedule. So it's like, well, I don't have to be at this time. I can kind of leave when I want. Oh, hey, you know, the disadvantage is, hey, can you go pick something up? Can you go drop something off? Can you go do this? Yeah, yeah, because I can just leave whenever I want. That's a disadvantage. Can you overcome that when they pop up? I think the biggest problem we have in real estate is we don't think we have a real job. So we just kind of pick up and leave whenever we want. We go whenever we want and it keep, gets us off track. You have to be structured. That's the disadvantages of it. You have to stay on your path, on your schedule. Can you do that as an independent contractor? So key point, key point to being successful. Number 12, since we live in a somewhat negative world, am I willing to smile and walk away when I encounter negative people? We've talked about this a hundred times. You are who you surround yourself with. Negative people, boom, you're out. You don't even have to apologize for shit. Gone. Okay? Get away from the negative people. I don't care who they are, your relation to them, how long you've known them. Negative, get up, smile, walk away. Stay positive. Okay? Number 13, avoid getting involved with buyers and sellers where you know they're going to mentally beat you up and you work with them anyways. We all do it. We know it. We know it right away. This is going to be a drag. This person is going to drain me. They're going to kill me. God, it's going to be a disaster, but I'm so desperate for the deal when you work with them anyways. Don't do that to yourself. Desperation is the downfall of all success. Move on. Just go. Don't do that to yourself. You know they're going to be a pain. Move on. Get them out. Get them over with. Don't move on to the more prospect and get more deals. Don't let those people drain you, take you out of your zone. Don't let it happen. Okay? Last four. Giving up, give up excuses. It's not about the cards you're dealt. It's about how you play your hand. Okay, for every story you tell me about someone who was born in privilege and that's why they made it to this certain level, there's another story of a person that was born worse than you are that made it to success as well. Okay, don't focus on that. Focus on you. How do you get better? No more excuses. Get out there and make it happen. That's it. Okay, stop looking for excuses. You make your own destiny. All right, number 15. Avoid your dependency to social media and television. They're the biggest diseases in our business. God, TV's just negative. It's so negative. Drama, negative. Get that, get out, get out of there. Get out of that zone. Boom. Get rid of it. And social media. <sighs> There's a place for it in your business, but God, we're spending too much time on there. You know? And it's either negativity or, hey, look, this is what I had for lunch, or hey, selfie, and this and that. What the hell? Who cares? Yeah, that's where I want my million dollar listing on is, you know, people grumbling with different emojis and selfies about what they have for lunch. Great. Who cares? You're living in their world. Go live in your world. You're, you're reading their posts. You're living in their world. Go live in your world. Who cares? Right? Too much time being spent. Social media and TV. It's negative. It's boring. It's dramatic. It takes you away from your business. Get rid of that. Get rid of it. Okay? Focus on your stuff that's going to get you business. All right? Last two. 16. Study and look at how other successful agents run their business. They're all around you. And most of them are willing to help. Most of them are willing to answer questions. Okay? I like this. It's ego satisfying to look, it's ego satisfying to look at people who do less than us. It's just not possible. We love it. We love looking at people who do less than us because we like feeling empowered. Look at I'm guilty of it as well. It's not profit for us to do that. Okay, especially in real estate, because we're God, if you did three transactions, you're better than 80% of the market, right? Go look at how successful agents are running their business. What are you doing? Let me pick up some of this. We pick up some of this information. They've obviously doing more than you. Well, don't you want their level of production? Don't you want their level of happiness? Most of them aren't as freaked out and desperate and running all over the place as you either because they're structured. Pick up on that. Pick up on that. Okay? 
and don't criticize them. Again, well, they get it because of this, they do this, they don't have what I have, the deals, the issues, and all these other things. If you criticize, you can't duplicate. Don't criticize them, just learn what they're doing, okay? And the last point here was strengthen your plan for learning. It can't be strong enough. Strengthen your plan for learning, it can't be strong enough. Keep learning, keep reading, keep watching, keep going to seminars, fill your brain with information. Your strength for learning cannot be strong enough. You have to keep going, read new books, do more things. Okay, different cultures, uncomfortable situations. That's the key to everything, okay? So again, 17 points. I tried to break it down, but I couldn't do it. I'm terribly sorry about that. 17 key points, key moments that I got from the Mike Fair Production Retreat that I'm gonna put right in my business right away. And I think you can take some of these and do it in yours. Now, if you went to the retreat, I'd like you to send me some of your top 10s or top 17, right? The key points that really hit you the most, because I always love to hear from other people. Okay? You can put them in the comments below, you can send it to me directly, whatever the case may be. Boy, I'd love to hear more. All right? That's your three things Thursday for the week. Please subscribe to my channel so you get all my videos, usually a couple a week. I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to speaking to you again next week.